Here's the rest of stage one of glycolysis. In this reaction, catalyzed by glucose 6 phosphate isomerase, the glucose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 6 phosphate. Remember that glucose and fructose have the same molecular formula, so by definition they are isomers. This reaction, as you can see, is endergonic, but very modestly so. The catalyzed reaction is freely reversible, and I note that enzymes that catalyze the interconversion of isomers are often called isomerases. In the next reaction, fructose 6-phosphate will itself be phosphorylated. This exergonic reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphofructokinase, which couples the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to ATP hydrolysis. Here's the energetics breakdown for the reaction. Once again, the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate can be seen as the sum of two reactions, as shown. Since the standard free energy change, the delta G0 for the overall reaction is minus 3.7 kilocalories per mole, and since the hydrolysis of ATP is exergonic generating minus 7.3 kilocalories per mole, we can calculate the standard free energy change for the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to be plus 3.6 kilocalories per mole. The enzyme's properties include that it is biologically irreversible and that it is allosterically regulated. The list of allosteric regulators that can inhibit or stimulate phosphofructokinase includes ATP, ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and AMP, adenosine monophosphate, as well as citric acid and fatty acids. Once you know where these molecules are produced or consumed in cells in respiration or other metabolic reactions, think about how and why each of these effectors works on this enzyme. Allosteric regulation of enzymes occurs at major biochemical pathway branch points, often ones catalyzed by biologically irreversible enzymes. Here's an abbreviated view of stage one of glycolysis. The first branch point is at the hexokinase step, shown here with a blue dot. The decision here is to either let glucose be metabolized for energy or leave it free to circulate to other cells. The next branch point is the reaction we were just looking at, catalyzed by phosphofructokinase. Here, allosteric regulation will mediate the decision to either use glucose for energy, that is, for glycolysis to proceed, or to store the glucose as glycogen, or possibly even convert it to other sugars, like ribose or deoxyribose, which happens, of course, depends on cellular needs. Remember that allosteric regulation can cause a change in the steady state of a pathway. In the next reaction, the enzyme fructose diphosphate aldolase splits the 6-carbon fructose 1,6-diphosphate into two 3-carbon molecules, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. As you can see, the reaction is very endergonic to the tune of plus 5.7 kilocalories per mole. Another enzyme, triose phosphate isomerase, catalyzes the isomerization of DHAP to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P, another endergonic reaction, with a standard free energy change of plus 1.83 kilocalories per mole. The net effect of the two reactions seen here is to split fructose 1,6-diphosphate, a 6-carbon sugar, into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, two 3-carbon carbohydrates. Added together, these two reactions occur with a total standard free energy change of plus 7.53 kilocalories per mole. These two reactions then would seem to be a very endergonic barrier to glycolysis. But are they? To answer this question, we need to know the standard free energy changes for the two reactions, as I've shown you, and we need to measure the cellular concentrations of reactants and products for each reaction. Here are some actual concentrations as measured in rat liver cells. We can intuit something about cellular energy needs and the two glycolytic reactions just from these concentrations. What do they tell us? Clearly, the overall product, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, is at much lower concentration than either fructose 1,6-diphosphate or dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Can you infer something from this? Let's summarize the first stage of glycolysis. A 6-carbon carbohydrate has been split into two 3-carbon carbohydrates. A total of two ATPs have been consumed here. There have been no redox reactions so far. Remember that the first of them occurs in the second stage of glycolysis. And we've seen two allosterically regulated enzymes, both of which in this case happen also to be biologically irreversible.